The UX250H is the entry-level Lexus crossover hybrid. Is it any good? We check out all the features and then take it to our off-road test course to find out. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This review is sponsored by Keeps. Look for more information and an opportunity to get 50% off your first order later in this video. The UX is a small crossover that Lexus hopes will draw younger shoppers into the luxury brand. And unlike competitors like Mercedes-Benz GLA and BMW X1, the little Lexus is available in North America with a hybrid all-wheel drive system. The model we're testing today is the 2021 UX250H Blackline Special Edition with all-wheel drive. This has a unique grille, headlights, roof rails, mirrors, color-matched over fenders, and an exclusive interior. It also comes with a set of matching luggage, but Lexus did not include that for review. Prices you see it here with destination and several extras, $41,535 US dollars. Under the hood is the same 2-liter inline 4-cylinder petrol engine found in the front drive UX200. Here in the UX250H, it produces up to 143 horsepower and 131 pound-feet of torque. It is combined with a pair of motor generators mounted coaxially in the transaxle. Together, this system produces up to 181 combined horsepower. There is also a third 7-horsepower motor mounted in the rear differential. This splits up to 40 pound-feet of torque between the rear wheels to help with traction and handling at speeds up to 45 miles per hour. The only transmission option is a continuously variable automatic with a 10-speed manual shift mode. This system features a real first gear to help with starts before handing it off to the pulley-based CVT. Wheels are 5-spoke 18-inch alloys wrapped in Bridgestone all seasons. EPA rates economy of this setup at 41 miles to the gallon in the city and 38 on the highway. Yeah, it's a hybrid, so it actually does better around town. The UX250H uses a compact set of nickel metal hydride batteries located under the second row. This does eat into storage a bit. Open the trunk with the optional kick sensor, and you're looking at 17.1 cubic feet of total cargo capacity in the hybrid. And yes, that is with the second row folded flat. This is simply not a good family car for that reason alone. However, there are many other types of buyers. Under the floor, there is no spare, but there are tools and a fix-a-flat kit. Now let's see how well a human fits inside. The second row is a little on the tight side. My knees are hitting the seat, and yeah, this is where I would be sitting if I was driving. I am six foot one, legs torso proportionate, and yeah, my knees are rubbing. Uh, my feet are also tucked under the seat, so I don't have a lot of room. But this is a very small car, so that really shouldn't be a surprise. I do have an armrest with cup holders, and I also do get two USB sockets that are USB-C. And then I also have control over my own vents. And no pocket on the driver's side, but the passenger side does get a pocket. If you've driven a modern Lexus, this is not terribly surprising. This has a lot of the design traits that you would find in their sports cars, like these mode selectors up here, uh, as well as their crossovers, uh, this awful touchpad down here. Cool animated graphics, welcome us, yes, it's a Lexus. Now, I do like the main central display. It has a lot of useful information here. Using the top button up here, I can switch between the different screens. It's your typical Toyota slash Lexus multifunction interface. And then in the middle, I have a display that changes. Now, it is all digital in the middle, and based on what mode I'm in, it has different displays. In Eco, it's Charge, Eco, and Power. Uh, in Sport, it shows a tachometer. Go back to Normal, and it goes to the same one as Eco. The steering wheel is really nice. It's wrapped in a beautiful leather with contrast stitching. 
Um, I can use the controls that are integrated to go through the multifunction display. And on the other side, I can control my adaptive cruise control, which is standard on this vehicle. Uh, Audi, BMW, they all charge extra for that functionality. Here, you just get it, as well as collision mitigation and blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alerts. It really is a nice bundle of safety features that are standard with this vehicle. Over here, we do have switch gear to control the aircon. Um, very easy to use. I do like it how it's front and forward because that's something you use every day. Below that is a shocker. That is a CD player. This has a CD player. How nuts is that? I have not seen one of these in a vehicle for over a year, but yeah, it's right there. And beneath that, I can control ventilation and heat on my seat. And the steering wheel is also heated as well. Now, if you want to talk about the seats, these are really nicely tailored. I love the leather effect. Actually, that's not leather, that's leatherette. Uh, but I like the effect of the pseudo leather. Uh, it just feels really good. And actually, that's got me thinking this is probably fake leather as well. And the reason for that isn't necessarily because it's cheaper, but this fake leather has gotten to the point where it's almost indiscernible from leather and a lot of people that are looking for hybrid vehicles are looking for something that's maybe a little bit not just environmentally conscious but also kinder to animals so that's what we get with this and the same materials on the armrest and on the the door here it's really just kind of a nice comfortable place to be very nicely supported i get lots of controls down here uh not like s-class levels of controls but you know for a compact, you're not gonna find something better. Down here, there's a 12 volt power plug, or I can just put my device on top of a wireless charger there. Now, this does not come with wireless CarPlay, unfortunately, it has standard plug-in CarPlay, which, okay, fine. It's just a thing they do. Down here, we have probably the worst blunder of this car, and even Lexus is aware that it is stupid because they have discontinued this on future models. It is their haptic touchpad. Uh, what this does is it functions with the display up here to kind of help you move around. Uh, right now, we have a three-view home screen, so as I scroll the pad, it's going to pick one of those screens. Let's go ahead and click on the lower one here. Shows me my energy distribution go back to home and I can see the menu here and the menu here this is just so old this is so dated this whole thing should be a screen at this point instead you have a lot of black with a little analog clock and this tiny display by today's standards I mean this is why Hyundai Genesis is eating Lexus's lunch it's because of little things like this that desperately need to get updated and yeah they will update it but not yet in this car now you will note that there is no navigation here. This is the type of vehicle where they assume the buyer is going to use something like Apple CarPlay. So let's go ahead and plug that in. It is kind of funny that though the back seats have USB-C, this one still uses a standard USB. There's a pass through for the cable and I can plug it in. Boom, there's our tiny little Apple CarPlay screen and I can use it using the controller here. And you know, CarPlay actually works pretty good with this touchpad. Uh, shockingly, it works better than Lexus's own system, but luckily Lexus isn't going to make us use navigation because their navigation with this touchpad is the worst. Um, what I can use is Apple Maps, and the nice thing about Apple Maps is, yeah, of course, it's based on Siri. So all I do is hit a button. Before you start, consider viewing the available video tutorials. I am not going to watch your video tutorials. Find. Uh, <laughs> oh, that changed the radio to New York City radio. Okay, let's not do that. Let's try to get it. Is it going to integrate with CarPlay? It isn't. So hitting the little voice talky button over here does not integrate with CarPlay. It tries to use their internal system, which doesn't even have navigation. So what I'm going to use, I have to use the touchpad to go over to Apple's command button here. Hold it down. Find the nearest Victor's Coffee. The nearest one I found is Victor's Celtic Coffee and Roasters on Gilman Street. Perfect. Of course, that worked because Apple CarPlay works. Now, of course, you can also do Android Auto. That is supported as well. 
Lexus does offer a widescreen option with integrated navigation. Not only does this fill the space better than the base system in our test vehicle, the navigation talks to the powertrain to optimize economy using map data. It also uses the same annoying touch controller. The upgrade does cost an extra $2,200 if you want it. Now, back to our test car. The hits of the early aughts continue with the rear view camera. That is an frankly awful camera. It's low resolution, it's small. It doesn't even fit the whole display for some reason, but it has wheel tracking and a center line. So it's usable, but just barely. There is an EV mode, but it only works at very low speeds. So it's really not that useful in this vehicle. If you wanted to do all electric motoring at all, I would skip this vehicle entirely and look at something else. So the powertrain in this vehicle is interesting because Toyota, when they have a hybrid powertrain all wheel drive system, they use a dedicated electric motor in the back wheels. Now, what I don't know is which system this one is using. Is it using the same system in the brand new RAV4 hybrid, which is quite capable off-road for what it is, or is it using the system adapted from the Prius? The Prius only allows for very, very limited all wheel drive functionality. And I know the 250H is very closely related to the Prius. So I might immediately lean that direction. But on the other hand, this is a Lexus. It's supposed to be better. So maybe they went with that newer system. I mean, they have updated it from being the 200H to being the 250H. Maybe that 50 is gonna give us a little extra kick in the back. Now, of course, I have a method in mind for figuring out which system this is. We're gonna take it to our test mountain. Yeah, this is the first mainstream crossover we're gonna take out there and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. So let's first head out to the freeway. We'll check out some of the features and then we're gonna put the all wheel drive system to the test. Oh, did you notice that? <laughs> yeah. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Uh, my grandfather practically bald by the time he was in his 40s. And so I saw it was coming for me, but it doesn't bug me. I actually don't care. But I also get to wear a hat to work every day. Yeah, you see me, but I'm wearing a hat because branding. <laughs> So if you don't have the opportunity to wear a hat every single day, or male pattern baldness isn't just for you, I wanna introduce you to today's sponsor, and that's Keeps. Keeps is an affordable option because it offers generic versions of the FDA approved medications for hair loss. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information and recommend a treatment plan that's right for you. Your treatment is shipped directly to your door every three months. If you have any questions, your Keeps doctor is available 24 seven. Keeps is about preventing hair loss, not magically making new hair. So if you start to see more of your scalp than you're comfortable with, you'll want to get started as soon as possible. If you're ready to get started, go to keeps.com slash driving sports, or click the link below to save 50% off your first order. That's K E E P S.com slash D R I V I N G S P O R T S. I'd like to thank Keeps for sponsoring this video. Uh, be sure to go to keeps.com slash driving sports to save 50%. So in normal driving, acceleration for on-ramps is just fine. I mean, it's not gonna set any records, but I feel like I have enough scoot to get up to freeway speeds quite easily. And the drivetrain in this is very similar to what you would find in the Prius all-wheel drive E. However, here, everything is basically just more powerful. And you would expect that for the price. I mean, you're looking, as we have this model, it's over 40 grand. That's not cheap for a small car. But you do get a luxury feel. Now, sure, the infotainment system is on the small side. Uh, and the gauge cluster does kind of have a dated look with its screen tech. But... You know, the feel of this car, the seating position, just the suspension, the damping, everything is just really well done. I did not expect to like this car, but I really like it. The UX 250H is really growing on me. Hmm, did not see that coming. Um, one nice thing about bad weather is we can really test out this adaptive cruise control system. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. 
set my speed and I'm going to make sure lane detection is on. And now it should not only detect lanes, but it should also detect the vehicle in front of me. And it will drive it up to the same pace as the, that vehicle is going. Uh, I have it set for 70. The vehicle in front of me is doing a little less, so we're actually doing slightly less. So far, no errors. Sometimes a little rain will cause flags in the system. Uh, this one's doing just fine. And as far as like road quietness, this is a very loud stretch of road. And for a compact luxury car, this is actually pretty quiet and comfortable. Oh, we're coming up to a corner here. So let's see how this adaptive cruise control with lane centering steers around it. Oh, that's a little, that's a little veery. I mean, it's finding the lines, but it's kind of ping-ponging a bit more than I would really like. Okay, now it's settled down and it's, it's tracking center, so it was an overcorrection to start, but once it got into its groove, it's actually doing a decent job. So I would give that a C. It has, uh, you know, it, it passes the class, but it's nothing spectacular. Let's try a pass here. Floor it on freeway speeds. Eh, there's a little get up and go. A little bit but you know one thing that I'm always concerned about with these hybrid vehicles especially these compacts is that they're going to be so slow as to feel almost dangerous I mean the Corolla Cross that we drove not too long ago very lethargic very slow I mean what was that almost 11 seconds 0 to 60 and it felt it everywhere we drove it just wasn't enough engine for the weight of that vehicle uh, this one I'm not getting that same feeling I'm feeling like this has enough power to get out of its own way, to get on the freeway, to do the passing that you need without being concerned that you're not gonna have enough punch there available. Now it's not fast, not at all, I'm not saying that, <laughs> but it is comfortable. Comfortable speed, comfortable seats, comfortable adaptive cruise. I mean, everything about this vehicle is just really comfortable and I, I rather like it. Okay, now we're gonna jump off the freeway, do a little side road driving, and then after that, we're gonna head out to our test course in Eastern Washington, where we will test out the off-road capability, that's right, of the UX250H. But first, side roads. I'm gonna go to sport mode, because this is where we can have some fun on twisty roads, and I'll put the transmission into sport and we'll do some manual shifting. It will emulate a 10-speed automatic, though of course it is a CVT after it gets through first gear. First gear is actual cogs, and then after that, it goes to the pulley system that is the CVT. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to one. Note there are no paddle shifters here. Power, whoa, yeah, a little spinny spin there. Power comes on pretty good, actually. Now, it will automatically shift when it feels like it needs to. Put the power down. It is a little rubber bandy, just like you would expect from a pulley-based CVT system. But you know, it's it's not bad if you want to feel like you're sporty driving. It doesn't blip the throttle or anything. It doesn't really emulate a sporty transmission. It just emulates a transmission. And nothing is as good as, of course, a real transmission. CVT is about economy, and they do a good job of kind of emulating something fun here but it's not good enough. I can't really see anybody going into manual mode pretty much ever with this system. So I'm just gonna put it back to drive and let's feel power here. Uh, power comes on. I, I do feel a little scoot in the back as it gets a little slippery up front from all this water that's on the road, but it's not too bad. It tries, but it's just not a sporty car. And that's okay, not everything needs to race from corner to corner. Uh, some vehicles just need to be comfortable and competent, and that is what the UX is. And it certainly has enough power to, you know, to have a little bit of fun, but it's not exciting. <laughs> Let's try a zero to 60. Now I am in sport mode. Stop completely. I'm gonna put a little throttle on to preload in three, two, one, go. That picks up pretty good from the start. And 60 in 9.06 seconds. Not fast, 
But like I was saying while driving through the forest roads, it's not about excitement. It's about capability and comfort. So let's do another run the other way and see if we can get a better time. And this time I'm not going to preload just in case that caused any issues. And you are noticing I'm in sport mode and it is shifting itself. You can override the shifts, but it will also just shift uh, and hold higher routes. Stop completely. Now this time I'm just gonna take my foot off the brake and jam it on the gas. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, that's actually pretty quick. I do like the electric motors have a lot of kick right out the gate. Because of course, electric motors have 100% of torque at zero RPM. 8.71, definitely the better launch. And that's not too bad. I mean, for what this is, yeah, I'll take that. Now let's jump on the freeway and head to Eastern Washington to see what the capability is like with this thing off-road. One thing I do notice is that to really pitch this thing, you need to drive it like it's a front wheel drive vehicle because essentially it is. Let me demonstrate. Pitch left and right. There's not a lot of juice going back there. So if you're looking for a sporty all wheel drive rally experience, this isn't it. And it's not just because of the lack of power to the back. It's also because of the traction control system. It is never completely off. To the test hill and see what this thing can do. With only 6.3 inches of ground clearance, this UX is barely a crossover. Today won't just be a test for the UX, it will also be a test of our new facility. Did we make this site too challenging? We're going to start with the most basic course. This will test the ability of the UX to transfer power between wheels on a level, uneven surface. If it passes this test, we'll try a similar one, but on an incline. Well, it's certainly a lot drier over here than it is on the other side of the pass. So um, I have my concerns about this vehicle. I just looked on the underside and there's an exhaust bit on the back that's hanging down really low. We're just going to give it a try and see what it does. Uh, we're going to do this lower, super easy course. This was the first course that we built. It's designed for vehicles just like this one. We don't have a name for it yet. I'm thinking maybe... The kiddie pool, <laughs> it's kind of shaped like a swimming pool. Uh, setup, nothing. I'm in normal and I'm gonna drive. So this first bit here, we're gonna take traction off one of the wheels and we're gonna see how power is distributed. So I'm gonna back up to make sure I get that wheel nice and high in the air. Get that wheel up. Still kind of going into the hole. Power on. Okay, it's putting a little power back there. You can get that through that pretty easily. Still hasn't heard any grinding yet, and I'm a little concerned because that front overhang is really, really sticks out there. It's really good to tune, you know. Okay, well it's got that so far, and I want to avoid rocks best I can. This of course is rolling on 18 inch alloy wheels and they are pretty wheels. I don't want to scratch them up. Rotate it around. Use that backup camera which I, looks like I, I can hardly see anything that's going on there. Like there's a rock back there but hard to tell when everything looks like mud. Details? Ah, who needs those? Now we're gonna go back. See if this, how this power shifts around. If we don't learn what we want to learn here, there's always the next test. And we're just basically going to escalate this until we feel like this vehicle can take no more. Okay, let's go up over here. Oh, here we go, finally, no grip. Now we should see power going to the back. I'm just adding throttle and it should shift around and take care of it but it doesn't seem to be. It is putting power back there, but it's not, it's not shifting it to the power. There we go. Throttle in. Ugh. Okay, so this is not working very well. Right here, you can see the system attempt to divert power by adding brake to the spinning wheel, but the net effect isn't enough to give me confidence in tricky situations. The electric motor in the rear axle of the UX just doesn't have enough power. 
even though the UX 250H all-wheel drive didn't do so great on our off-road test course today, keep in mind this really isn't intended for those kind of conditions. This, this is an all-wheel drive system to make people feel more confident, uh, to help them out in slippery situations like, you know, if you're on a hill in the rain or if it's a light snow, all those conditions, this all-wheel drive system will be just fine. However, if you do need something a little more advanced, there are lots of great options in this category, but you're going to have to give up economy because, yeah, I mean, on the drive out here, I got 45 MPGs on the highway. That's better than what they said we should get. Um, so it's really impressive economy in this thing, and it drives perfectly quick for what this type of vehicle is intended for. But going back to the all-wheel drive system, if you do want to get something that is more capable, you know, take a look at a petrol-only solution, possibly. They just seem to be better built for these type of situations. Um, Bronco Sport, Subaru Crosstrek, we actually have a video coming up where we'll compare the two of those. That's coming up in a few weeks, so definitely subscribe. This vehicle is rather expensive, and I think that's okay. It caters to a very specific person who wants a small vehicle, either because they're older and they don't have kids, or they're younger and they don't have kids, or they have kids, but they need a second commuter car. All those situations, this vehicle is pretty good. It has the luxury that you would want in this class. It has good handling, it has great features. I don't care for the infotainment system, but once you plug in Apple CarPlay, that's not an issue. Uh, so, yeah, overall, I like this car, even though it did fail our off-road test. Um, but, you know, you have to consider what is the vehicle actually used for. And I'm really glad now to know what the baseline is for our course. UX250H, not good enough. So anybody who's saying that you can just take a Camry on our course, yeah, there you go. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and we hope you enjoy them. See you again real soon, right here.